Hello everyone. In this video, a bright object is seen following NASA's Perseverance rover, which might suggest evidence nearing the discovery of extraterrestrial life. Additionally, there's a possibility of bringing jewels from Mars to Earth. Here, we see the emergency landing of ISA in and its disconnection with NASA. In fact, this video is part of a series documenting the Perseverance rover and its helicopter landing every three months. The rover is currently located at the edge of Belva Crater, investigating sediments from ancient rivers. Through these studies, it has been revealed that some of these sediments might have a fragmented structure. Perseverance's long-term plan is to discover a potential heir to an ancient riverbed, once responsible for depositing water into the delta of the Chero Crater, which now largely fills the crater. Moreover, some rocks in the area appear quite peculiar. For instance, the rock you see has split into two and was likely transported here by fast-flowing water. It resembles a face with two eyes and a mouth, essentially a sign of weathering conditions. In fact, most of these formations likely originated tens of kilometers away from this region. At this point, the NASA team commands the rover to take drilling samples. Perseverance records an operation lasting approximately 20 minutes. You can see the rover's shadow moving with the sun. Another noteworthy detail is the subtle trail left on the rock when the Perseverance passed over it during the 20-minute operation. Throughout this work, we can observe the wind moving small particles and sand, showcasing how this camera is designed to improve the visibility of the drilling. Here, Perseverance returns to the drilling area, and the Earth team attempts to capture the visual of the sample in the tube. Unfortunately, the sample isn't sturdy enough, and only 1.3 centimeters can be examined. As a result, the rover repeats the task. Before heading to another interesting location 20 meters away, Perseverance looks back at the Belva Crater, examining the area with a high-resolution mosaic. Here, sedimentary layers emerging from the rock surface are visible. The rover moves a short distance to revisit these layers. As the mission progresses, it becomes evident that the rocks in the region are quite fragile. However, the team persists in collecting samples from such rocks and selects the Emerald Lake area for the next attempt. As the rover advances, it encounters some extraordinary rocks that seem to have formed through certain geological processes. These peculiar formations likely form through a process known as cavernous weather conditions. For example, this small rock is a great illustration of the mentioned conditions, which on Earth have also facilitated the creation of caves. Cavernous weather conditions on Earth generally occur due to water movements. Fragments in the water get trapped in currents, gradually hollowing out rocks. Hence, these rocks on Mars indicate the possibility of significant water flows in the past. After a short journey, the rover reaches Emerald Lake and confirms the presence of the substances the NASA team wanted to sample. The rover begins recording and instantly takes a photo of the sample, finally obtaining a sturdy sample, a significant achievement. These fragmented rocks, known as conglomerates, are actually quite important. Let's assume we bring these samples back to Earth. In that case, we could determine when Mars lost its highly significant magnetic field, crucial for the development of life. However, after completing its scientific activities, something strange happened as the Perseverance rover photographed its surroundings, it lost contact with Earth. In fact, since its initial landing on Mars, the rover had entered safe mode four times, usually re-establishing communication within three days. However, this time, re-establishing contact took a worryingly long period of five days. Engineers at NASA worked to determine the cause of this communication interruption while the rover captured an image of its last drilling site and returned to work. Along with this successful sample, Perseverance and the scientific team planned to move towards a location known as Snow Drift Peak. However, while the rover was far away, it spotted something strange. It appeared as if there was a groove in a rock on the horizon. Therefore, Perseverance began using its super camera to obtain a better image. This rock was likely another example of cavernous weather conditions. As Perseverance moved away from the Emerald Lake area towards Snow Drift Peak, NASA team members started thinking that the rover could re-establish communication with its long out-of-range antenna. 
Meanwhile, as the rover progressed a bit further, it encountered another example of weather conditions. This rock was extremely well carved. After a short drive, Snow Drift Peak was reached, and the rover began surveying the area. At this point, the sloping peaks of the Jezero Crater Wall were visible. However, even more exciting were the numerous intriguing rocks discovered at this location. These are likely more diverse examples of cavernous weather conditions. Moreover, as the rover progresses upstream of the river, it might encounter a large cave big enough for the rover's camera to enter. Due to the sharp and potentially hazardous quantity of rocks, the NASA team decided to capture the area's image. This sequence demonstrates the effectiveness of the autonomous driving software, navigating a potentially hazardous area with few obstacles, taking about 16 minutes in real time. After this task, the rover looked at the rugged terrain and attempted to establish contact with the lander. However, there was no evidence of the helicopter. The team at NASA started to worry about what had happened to the lander. Perseverance was alone in the Snowdrift Peak area. The object it appeared to be tracking was a piece of the helicopter's face. So, why was the object being tracked by the rover? Researchers had determined that this debris piece was being moved by the wind. However, the question remained, could it move approximately 3 kilometers upstream of the delta, or was this an entirely different piece? Both objects' shapes and sizes closely resembled each other. Therefore, there's a slight chance that they might be the same piece. However, if they aren't the same, it will indicate how far the debris was scattered during the mandatory landing. At Seoul 845, the rover captured images of some rocks in the area, leading the team at NASA to make an interesting observation. During the study, they speculated that these rocks were accumulated by an extremely robust water system. Additionally, as formations rested on smaller rocks and pebbles, team members believed that this robust water system might be much younger than initially thought. Following this, Perseverance passed through an exciting rock formation referred to as the Dragon Egg by the NASA team. At this point, the rover was instructed to collect close-up shots. The team really wanted a sample of this rock. However, the operation ended in failure because the rock was too hard. The marks left by the rover's attempts were visible on the rock, indicating slippage during the process. Consequently, the rover moved away from the rocky terrain, turning its gaze towards the high crater edge to the west, showcasing a stunning view. The expansive walls of the Jezero crater were visible on both sides of the ancient river system. Currently, it's impossible to know what the ancient riverbed looked like. However, the rover may capture this in the future. Then, it attempted once more to abrade the dragon egg rock and initiated the use of the dust removal tool. When the dust cleared, some close-up shots were taken. The rock appeared rich in olivine minerals with a greenish hue. Later, the rover decided to use the abrasion tool once more, recording the operation this time. After team checks, Perseverance successfully captured the image of the Tan Yumai formation. This operation went much more smoothly this time. However, enough depth has still not been reached. On the other hand, bright residues causing surface abrasion on Mars could be observed. While the team was investigating, they noticed something peculiar, a dark circular mark on the rock. After this discovery, the rover was instructed to take numerous photos of the area. Some suggested that these marks could be remnants of lichens, similar to examples found on Earth. In 2013, a study published in the P.L. Terry Space and Science magazine demonstrated that some lichen species could survive in simulated Martian environments. After collecting data, the rover refocused on the abrasion patch. To better understand why the rock formed, the rover was commanded to examine the part under ultraviolet rays. It was concluded that the rock couldn't withstand further processing. At Seoul 857, the rover encountered another rock expected to be softer. Some unusual textures were observed on the surface, prompting the use of the abrasion tool by perseverance. However, due to the rock's hardness, the tool couldn't penetrate deeply, but the imagery continued. During the capture of these photos, the team noticed something interesting again. A dark spot resembling a previous one captured by the Spirit rover in 2005, resembling lichens found on Earth. 
Comparing both images, a similar distance and size in the abrasion area were visible. These dark spots could be a byproduct of the abrasion process. Experts suggest they might be small scratches caused by the rover's finger-like balance. NASA might provide more information about what lies beneath the surface of these rocks in future studies. Currently, Perseverance is busy drilling. However, it encountered yet another hard rock. After checking for any damage, the rover is directed towards a prominence called Dream Lake to the west. The rover stops at Sol 870, noticing something, an unexpected sighting of the helicopter. Perseverance turns for a better view and reaches Ingenie. Both vehicles transfer data as they're within range. However, the helicopter is not in the expected location due to previous navigation camera malfunctions. Despite the team's belief that this error was corrected, software updates caused more damage. Following another software update at NASA, the helicopter performs a short up and down flight, turning left before landing gently from a 5 meter height. This situation might be expected for such terrain landings. Additionally, during this time, they captured a colorful image from the sky, visible even to Perseverance. At another location, Sol 874, the rover encounters a peculiarly textured rock covered in numerous small nodules. The rover inspects the rock filled with small pebbles and dust piles using its arm. As a result, Perseverance reveals magnificent crystal varieties using the dust removal tool. Given the amount of olivine detected by other NASA missions in the area, these are likely olivine crystals. A typical olivine stone on Earth is valued between $50 to $500, but these Martian gems would likely fetch a much higher price due to their rarity. This discovery allows operations to proceed smoothly. Small veins of olivine-like minerals are visible in the photo of the piece. Afterward, before parting ways again, Perseverance takes one last look at the landing site, heading towards Flight 55 at a 9881. It takes off, flying west over a small hill and scanning the path. Meanwhile, the helicopter observes an unusual formation, surveys the surroundings before determining a landing spot, successfully capturing a colorful image of the formation from above. Meanwhile, Perseverance is focused on a rock rich in olivine and attempts to obtain a sample. Indeed, even the records of the rover's drilling are a significant success. However, the sample seen inside the tube will be much more important. When brought back to Earth, these samples will truly become Martian jewels.